Hello and welcome to the World of Tanks Bootcamp. A complete guide to start playing World of Tanks for new players. Today, we will dive into our first battle and guide you through all the info you can see on your screen. Give you a few tips about aiming, shooting and discovering enemies weak spots to be able to deal damage effectively and show you some basic battle tactics to help you stay alive longer. Let's start with the game interface. With your game set up, your crew trained, your tank loaded with all the shells needed and equipped with the best modules you can own, and also with the right consumables and equipment, we're ready to start a battle. Make sure the random battle option is selected on the top of your screen, and then click the big red button to jump into the game. You will be matched with vehicles of different types and nations, but usually the same tier plus or minus two. Keep in mind, the higher tier tank you select for the battle, the more experienced players you will usually encounter. Your team's vehicles will be displayed on the left side of the screen, while your enemy's vehicles will be on the opposite side. Press Ctrl to show the mouse cursor and switch the look of the players list in the upper left corner to the fifth option called Full Panel. This displays the eliminations of each tank, the displayed badge of each player, which you can get in campaigns and different events, then the name of each player, the name of their tank with the tank type and its shape and tier next to it. If you have set up your game according to our last episode, you should see the HP bar of friendly and enemy vehicles on the top of your screen, together with the number of eliminations on each side and the icons showing you the number of alive and eliminated vehicles by their type. Above the enemy vehicles is the countdown timer of the battle. If the timer reaches zero without any of the teams capturing the base or eliminating each other, the result is a draw, except in the assault mode where the defending team wins. Under the enemy vehicles in the right bottom corner is a small minimap. It is a good idea to enlarge it to make it easily readable. Press the button left of the backspace key on your keyboard to increase the size of the minimap and the button to its left to decrease its size. The minimap gives you a lot of useful info like spotted enemies, spotting circles, your direction, the position and size of objects on the map, safe spots for crossing the river and the movement of all vehicles so it is crucial to make it larger and pay attention to it during battle. On the bottom of the screen in the middle, we have our equipped ammo and consumables that you must load in your tank before the battle. By pressing Ctrl and hovering your mouse over it, you can check the stats of each ammo type if you forgot to check it in the garage. You can switch between each type of ammo by clicking the respective numbers assigned to it, usually 1, 2 and 3, to choose a different shell after reloading or double-click to reload the differential immediately. Slots 4, 5 and 6 are the consumable slots. Every time your tank's module is damaged or destroyed or a crew member is injured, you can press the respective number to repair the module or heal the crew member. The number shown on the consumable shows the time until it will be ready to use again. The small repair kit and first aid kit require a selection of the module you want to repair or crew member you want to heal. The large ones repair all modules and heal all crew members automatically. Pro tip! By putting your small repair kit in slot 5, you will make your life easier when your track gets destroyed, as a quick double tap on that key will get you rolling again. The manual fire extinguisher needs to be used swiftly to extinguish a barbecue in tank. An automatic one will do the job by itself, so if you don't have super quick reactions to use the manual one, the automatic is worth the credit investment. A very important part of the game interface is in the bottom left corner, showing you your name and the name of the vehicle, its health points, speed, orientation and the state of its modules and crew. Above it, you'll find the in-game chat. And if you've set up the game accordingly, you'll also see your in-game activity log right next to your vehicle's status panel and the damage taken on the top next to your team. The chat on the left and the voice chat you've probably switched off are not the most common tools used in-game to communicate with other players. Press Z to access the command menu and select the communication options. If you directly look at an allied or enemy tank when doing this, you'll have different options like thank you or help, or you can also use your function keys like F7 for help to communicate even faster. 
we've already gone through a few of the basics of aiming and shooting at enemy tanks by setting the right reticle in our previous episode. But there is much more to it. The circle around your central gun marker shows the gun dispersion. Your shots are guaranteed to land within the circle, but they will not necessarily hit the center. The more accurate the gun, the smaller the circle. If you are on the move, your reticle and gun dispersion will be larger, so it is advisable to stop, wait and fire with a fully aimed gun if you have the time to do so. Each of the shells has a different flight speed called shell velocity. If you are firing at moving enemies, don't forget to account for the speed of the shell and the time it will take to reach its target. Every tank and ammo type has a different shell velocity, so try to get to grips with your favorite tank and play it often to make better estimations. Auto-aiming might help you shoot an enemy vehicle, but use it wisely. It might be a good way to follow a fast vehicle on a short distance or help starting players control the tank, but it doesn't account for the flight time of shells and doesn't aim at enemies' weak spots. It always aims only for the center of mass of enemy tank. Press right mouse button while aiming at enemy tank to activate the auto-aim. If you set up your game properly, you should be able to see a penetration indicator while aiming your gun. It shows you the chance of penetrating an enemy vehicle using colors and it works like a traffic light. Green shows you the places you will penetrate, orange shows that there is a chance of penetration, and red shows when you aim at places with no chance of penetration. Since we already know your shells will not go exactly where you aim, the results of a shot might deviate from your expectations. Good knowledge of the tanks in-game and the strength of their armor can make a big impact on your successful penetrations of enemy vehicles. Tank armor is usually the strongest on the front of the hull and turret and is weaker on the sides and back. The armor of the hull is measured in millimeters and you can find its values in vehicle characteristics as front slash side slash rear armor. If a vehicle has 75 slash 45 slash 45 millimeter vertical hull armor, a shell with a 60 mm standard penetration will pierce its sides and rear by a direct hit, but will not penetrate the front. Take a look at the IS-3 armor scheme. You can see the thickness of the armor represented in colors. Keep in mind that the angle of the armor matters profoundly. If the enemy vehicle angles their armor well, your shells might struggle to penetrate due to the increased relative thickness of the armor mass and your shots will likely bounce off the surface. That is called a ricochet and it happens to only certain types of shells. So let's talk more about the shell types. Switching the ammo and using it for the right purpose can help immensely with dealing damage. There are several shell types you'll encounter in-game. Armor-piercing shells or AP, armor-piercing composite rigid shells called APCR, high-explosive shells called HE, high-explosive squash head shells called HESH, which are very similar to HE, and high-explosive anti-tank shells called HEAT. Each type has different attributes, which makes them the most effective only in certain situations. Use AP shells if you want to save some credits and to attack moderately armored opponents. Since APCR has better penetration values, use it if you happen to encounter a well-armored enemy or when you engage distant or fast-moving targets, because APCR rounds tend to be faster than other shell types. Use heat in a similar way you would use APCR shells. Just count on a slower flight speed and don't shoot through obstacles. Try to avoid spaced armor because similarly to HE, heat shells will explode upon impact. Use AP or APCR if the enemy is hiding behind a destroyable obstacle. Due to its low penetration values and explosive nature, HE is best to use against slightly armored enemies or for resetting the cap timer. Since it doesn't ricochet and inflicts splash damage, use it to deal damage to well-angled enemies. It is also the slowest shell in the game. Don't forget, Heat, Hash and APCR shells are usually more costly because of their better penetration values, so use them wisely. When progressing to higher tier battles, it is advisable to start to focus on certain weak spots. On some tanks, you might recognize them by a flat side of the armor, some tanks have a weak lower frontal plate, while some tanks can be penetrated in crew hatches and observation devices or the top surface of the turret. Generally speaking, a tank's hull tends to be weaker compared to its turret. However, if you see a flat turret side, feel free to shoot away. And if you happen to meet a strong tank you can't penetrate anywhere, or clever player hiding their weaknesses, 
Damaging their tracks or external modules can help at least disable or distract the enemy enough to be shot by your teammates or give you just enough time to escape or reposition. For best results, always check the available modules for your vehicle and their characteristics. Choosing a gun of a higher tier or a better turret can significantly change the performance of your tank. Equipment can also help to improve your tank's performance. If you want to improve your gun, use the filter in the Equipment menu to select a cross icon that marks all the equipment boosting firepower. More equipment choices will unlock once you progress through the tiers. There are other ways to damage an enemy vehicle than shooting. The most common is ramming. The heavier and faster your vehicle is, and the less armored and lighter the enemy is, the more ramming damage you can do. Do not try to ram heavier enemies than you. It will hurt you much more than it will hurt them. You can also push enemies from cliffs to destroy them, overturn them or push them in the water to drown them. And again, you can push only enemies of just about the same size as you or lighter enemies. Now you know how to deal damage to enemy tanks, but surviving in battle is important as well. The same principles we've mentioned about other tanks on the battlefield can be applied to your tank. Be aware of what your tank can do and where are its limits. Decide on the best strategy and how to play it out. For example, the KV-2 is a very strong and feared tank with a powerful gun that can wipe some lighter tanks out with one shot. On the other hand, its gun is not very accurate, its turret has big flat sides that are easy to penetrate, and it is very slow and hard to maneuver. Play this tank in close proximity to help your gun place the shots where you need, a closed environment like a city can help you hide your big turret from enemy fire and easily escape behind the cover of a building since the tank is very slow. Always take advantage of terrain and indestructible objects on the battlefield. They can serve as a protection from enemy fire while you wait for your gun to reload. Bigger objects like large rocks and buildings can help you stay safe from SPG fire. If your tank performs well in hull-down scenarios, that means the turret is well armored and the gun depression angle is good, you can therefore position yourself behind a rise so that opponents can see only your heavily armored turret while your more vulnerable hull is hidden and safe. Also, be careful about drowning or overturning yourself. If you want to cross a mass of water, always look at the minimap where the safe shallow waters are marked with a beige color. If you try to cross deep water and the water goes inside your engine compartment, you will have only 10 seconds to save your tank from drowning. The lighter and faster your tank is, the easier it is to overturn it. If you happen to overturn your tank, you would need to use the Z menu to call for the help of your teammates. But if you happen to have a double barrel tank, you can use your sheer gun power to get back on your tracks. Buildings, stones, thick bushes and fallen trees can conceal your vehicle and make it harder to spot, but your entire vehicle must be blocked by the object or foliage to make it work. You can make your vehicle even less visible by using camouflage in the exterior elements, equipment, consumables and special crew perks and skills. And always remember, firing your gun can reveal your position. Keep in mind that vehicles are the hardest to spot when they are not moving, Moving your hull makes you more visible, but feel free to move your turret and gun. If you are within 15 meters of the bush, you will be able to see through it while remaining covered by the bush. Shooting from that position makes you much more visible and negates the concealment provided by the foliage. The most effective way to shoot from behind the bush is to drive backwards more than 15 meters till the bush is opaque again in sniper mode, and then shoot the enemies from behind it. By doing that, you will remain unspotted. If you're spotted by the enemy, try to hide from their sight or go behind the foliage till the foliage becomes opaque again in sniper mode and wait for at least 10 seconds to become unspotted and sneaky again. Now you know a lot of beginner-friendly tips and tricks that can help you to orient yourself better in World of Tanks. I hope you found this video helpful and enjoyable and if you want to start playing, be sure to use our invite code TANKBOOTCAMP to get 7 days of premium time to help you progress faster, 250,000 credits to give you a head start in the game, 2D skin moon viewing to get dressed according to the latest fashion trends, 
and a Tier 5 Premium Tank Excelsior with a fully trained crew and one garage slot. We'll be back soon with a new episode, so don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon so you won't miss it. See you next time and good luck on the battlefield, Commanders!